Hello and welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in, guys. Happy Thursday, or if you're listening to this on the podcast, happy Friday. We have a lot to break down. We're going to be breaking down Stasi Schroeder's book, so get ready for that. We're going to read exactly what she wrote about faith in the book. We're going to talk about Ocean Gate and the Titan. It's not a submarine. It's a sub sub something. We'll get into all of that too because Cardi B's now jumping in and she's she's got some fighting words. And even Andy Cohen is coming to Meghan Markle's defense. And I'm like, what in the world is happening? So get ready. Let's break it down, shall we? Oh, hi. It's me, Zach Peter. Pop culture junkie. Reality TV insider, published author, and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in. If you are watching this live, it is Thursday night. Hello, YouTube. Is the YouTube is live? Hello, Instagram. The Instagram is live. If you're listening to this on the podcast, one, be sure to leave me a nice Apple podcast review because the trolls are out again. But leave me some love if you've been appreciating the podcast. It's easy to drop a five star review. You are catching a rebroadcast from our Thursday night live. So get ready for that. I will be doing some shout outs. I will be responding to people that are engaging live. So just know this is a more informal. Our Friday episodes are the more informal podcast episodes, but we have a lot to break down today. I have Stassi Schroeder's book right here off with my head, the definitive basic bitch handbook to surviving rock bottom because now Faith Stowers is saying that she wants to sue Stassi. So we will be getting into that. I'm going to read exactly what Stassi wrote about Faith in her book. We'll get into all of it. Um, I want to talk about Ocean Gate and what's been going on with Ocean Gate and the Titanic. Sorry, the Titan that went to go see the Titanic that then went missing because now Cardi B's jumping in on the fight and she's got some words for some of the family members. And then... We'll also be talking about Andy Cohen because he's defending Meghan Markle. And I'm like, yo, Andy, what are you doing? Okay, so we'll get into all of that today. But first, let me know what you're for in a comment. Drop your first name and where you're watching in from so I can give you a shout out. Hi, Annika. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Kim Stone. Hi, Sandra Kreider. Hi, Russ Davis. Um, uh, Tara says, hi, the haters come out as you become more and more successful. Keep doing you. Thank you, Tara. Tara Levine. Hi, Charmin BB. Ooh, Charmin BB has been an OG. We have Kathy from Holland. We have Kim from Florida. Andy, the real Andy of Beverly Hills. Happy belated birthday, my love. Happy belated. Everyone wish the real Andy of Beverly Hills a belated birthday. I believe he's one day after me. So we got to celebrate a bit at the bourbon room last week. End up in the house from Vegas. Okay. Hi, Kim from South Carolina. Mary from Pocon- P- Poconos. Poconos. Um, Lynn from Vernon Hills, Illinois. Lori from Madison, Alabama. Woo, woo, what's going on? Ooh, we have Maria from Queensland, Australia. Jessica from Dallas. Jessica, hi, Jessica. Um, all right, we have Lishi from Australia. Janie from Idaho. Ooh, we have Nazish from the UK from Windsor. Jane from Boston. Okay, thanks, guys. Hi, Brian from LA. Ooh, Lebop55 from Long Island, New York. Are you coming to my New York show July 26th with the Broad Bros at City Winery NYC? Go to nofilterlive.com to get your tickets. NYC, July 26th. It's going to be a blast. Okay, let's dive into everything. Let's start with where should we begin? Up in the club. Just working on my fitness. He's my witness. Ooh-wee. Okay, so let's start with Andy Cohen, okay? Zach is worldwide. I'm international, but I'm an international lifestyle brand end up. The submersible company is based in my town. Jamie Lynn, say what? Okay, well, let's, we'll have a lot to say about the submersible, but let's talk about Andy Cohen really quickly because he's coming out and he's defending Meghan Markle. So since news broke of Meghan Markle not conducting her own interviews, since all of that came out, now Andy Cohen's jumping in and he's like, hold up, wait a minute, that's not true. That's an insane rumor because when, I got interviewed by Meghan Markle for her Archetypes podcast on Spotify. She conducted the interview myself, except this is where Andy Cohen got it a little bit wrong because the rumors were not um, 
they were not that she didn't conduct all of her interviews, but it was that some of the interviews that were on her podcast, she didn't conduct them herself. Her team actually conducted them. So, and they accused her of then editing in sound bites of her asking questions or responding to guests to make it look like she was the one that was actually participating in this conversation with them rather than conducting the interviews herself. It was her team. But the big part of the rumor that Andy was missing is that the rumor claimed that she still conducted all of the celebrity interviews. So as long as there was a big name attached, she was happy to do the interview. But with the others, like the expert interviews, she apparently did not conduct those herself. Her team conducted them for her and she was edited in after the fact which I kind of believe. I believe that she wanted to interview the stars. I believe she wanted some FaceTime with celebrities. I believe she wanted the photo op to show like, look at, I'm so well connected. Look at all these great guests that I have on my podcast. I'm amazing. Um, but I think the app, the, experts were more for the optics of the archetype podcast. You know, we wanted to make sure we had them, but you know, we wanted to make sure we couldn't be bothered by actually interviewing them. So let other people deal with, let the Commonwealth deal with that. I'm a Royal. I'm a Royal. That's a retired Royal because I don't want to be a Royal, but I'm like Princess Diana and I'm like super Royal. I'm a super Royal famous bitch. Yes. Work party. So yeah, apparently she didn't interview any of the experts, but she absolutely interviewed the celebs, but either way, the deal is done. Their reported 20 million contract will not be fulfilled after all. They're not going to get their full 20 million princess or sorry, Prince, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan because they didn't produce enough contract, enough content per their contract. So it's been what they signed that back in like 2020, 2021, maybe is when like it officially began. Is there a reason why the Spotify fell through because they didn't, because tones, they did not fulfill their end of the bargain with their contract with their contract they were set to produce like even with me i have a contract and i have a number of episodes that i have to deliver on and a time frame within when i have to deliver those episodes otherwise the contract becomes null and void so in this case they didn't produce all the content that they promised that they would produce they were like give me my 20 mil dollar dollar bills yeah we want to go see the titanic so give us 20 mil well unfortunately the 20 mil did not last. They will not be getting their full paycheck. Their contract is done. Ooh, look at this. We got super stickers in the house. Hi, Brian. Look at artist Fleetwood. I enjoy all your commentary. Thanks for all your hard work. I appreciate you. Thank you, my love, for the super sticker on YouTube. I appreciate that, my dear. Retired royal. Yeah, she's a retired. She was a royal refugee that Tyler Perry had to save. And then Oprah gave them a platform with her interview. And now here we are. The royal ref refugees are still trying to rip people off. They're royal grifters, as Bill Simmons called them. Bill Simmons is an executive at Spotify. And he said that they are royal grifters. And I agree. Grifters, you want to take my money? Bye. Bitch, better have my money. Pay me what you owe me. Hmm. Mm -mm. Susan, are they really filming Vanderpump Rules starting tomorrow? I don't believe they're filming again until July. I don't think they were supposed to film. I believe they were taking a bit of a beat after the reunion, as in like a couple of weeks, unless something changed last minute. So what does buy your own super chat mean? Um, I don't buy my own super chats, but people, if they want to support, can buy a super chat in the um, live chat on YouTube. Okay, let's get into the submarine and then we'll get into the Stasi and the Faith stuff, okay? Because, or it's not a submarine, sorry, it's a sub. Oh, thank you, Sandra Kreider for the super sticker. Woo, woo, thank you, Sandra. Um, okay, there's a lot here. So if you haven't really been keeping up with it, I'm going to give you a brief recap and then we'll dive into all of it, okay? So there's a company called OceanGate, which seems very fitting for the fact that there was a submersible that was lost at the ocean and it sounds like an ocean gate well the company is called ocean gate and they launched a paid mission to go and check out the titanic up front they wanted to go and see where kate winslet and leonardo dicaprio were doing da, 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 na, 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 na. they wanted to hear the echo of celine dion's voice in the ocean okay so some very very wealthy men as in billionaires wealthy men they decided, um, you know, this beat is sick. I want to take a ride on your Titan stick. And so they went in this tiny little submersible, okay, which is not to be confused with the, with the submarine because I thought it was a submarine, but it's not a submarine. It's a submersible, okay? That's how it identifies. It identifies as a submersible, not a submarine. 
And so the difference being that a submarine and a submersible is that a submarine has enough power to leave the port and then come back to the port under its own power, which is probably what we should have taken to the bottom of the ocean to go see the Titanic. A submersible has very little power that um, that it needs, and so it needs a mothership that can actually launch it and then recover it, according to Dr. Edith, Edith Witter. So probably would have been a better idea, especially considering, you know, people paid a lot of money for this. It was to put them in like an actual submarine, but I don't know if a submarine was able to go all the way to the bottom because it was like a teeny tiny little compact little rocket ship, which is typically what I like in bed, right? I'd like a pocket rocket. I don't like a big submarine. Give me a little submersible and we're, we're solid, right? I don't need you to be well endowed. I'm well endowed enough. So they decided that they were going to have the submersible take them all the way down to the the dibbity dobbity bottom of the ocean so that they can see what was left of the Titanic up close and personal. Because when you have that kind of money, why not spend it on just going and visiting the Titanic in the ocean all the way at the bottom in the dark, deep blue sea. So they ended up paying $250,000 a person, okay? Per person, they paid to go on this trip in this submersible, you would think, hey, listen, I would, if I had that kind of money, I would pay 1 million to put me in a submarine. That way I can make sure it can be recovered and I don't get lost at sea. So it is basically the size of a minivan. So it's really, really small. Um, it's not very big. So it only fit about five people. And it was supposed to be a rather short trip. I think they were estimating around like five ish hours or so it took off on Sunday. Um, they ended up losing communication. I believe it was just under two hours. It was like an hour and 45 minutes right after they went. It was supposed to take them about two and a half hours to get all the way down to go see the Titanic, but they lost all communication. And then when you actually see it, Goddamn, they got ripped off for their life. You're telling me, Keonse. So they had a little, uh, a, like a PlayStation remote control is what the CEO who was on this mission with them, that's how he was guiding this thing. It was literally like a PlayStation remote control. See, when I saw that shit, I would not get in the submersible. I wouldn't even get in a submarine. I don't even want to get in the Disneyland submarine to go see Nemo, okay? I'm not finding Nemo. I'm not finding Dory. I'm not finding a fucking Titanic. I'm good, baby. I'm good. I will. I saw the movie, The Titanic, and that's all I need to see. They took us in the little, the, the video cameras under the ocean, deep down in the deep blue sea. I don't need to see Ariel. I'm good. Ursula, I'm good. Who wants to see Miss Melissa McCarthy in drag? I don't need to see Ursula. Okay. So they took off on Sunday, ended up losing all communication, and then they were lost at sea, which it then prompted a rescue mission to go out and try and find them. Okay. I believe it was supposed to take them, like I said, about two and a half hours to get all the way down there. So presumably about the same amount of time to come back up. So the plan wasn't to stay out there for multiple days. It was to be down and back within one, you know, one trip, right? Or not one trip, but then one day. So they lost all communication less than 24 hours in. And then they've been out there today's Thursday at the time of this recording. They were still lost at sea as of this morning. So they were believed to have had enough oxygen for 96 hours, which would have kept them with oxygen until Thursday morning, which would have been this morning. However, they weren't discovered in time of that 96 hour window. And so at that point they were presumed dead because they believed that the submersible had lost oxygen. So on board was the ocean gate CEO Stockton rush. I mean, there's a low hanging fruit joke with that one. Stockton rush, Pakistani businessman, Shazada Dawood. He brought his teenage son, Suleiman, Suleiman, sorry. Yeah, Sulman, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Forgive my pronunciation if that's incorrect. But Shazada and Sulman went together. That was a father-son duo. There was Titanic expert Paul Henry Nargielet. And then there was British chairman for action aviation, Hamish Harding. So all of these very wealthy five gentlemen decided to take this trip all the way down to go see the Titanic and I don't know, take a selfie. Why they needed to go on a trip to go see the Titanic, like to me, even if I had that kind of money, I just, I, I don't think I would make this choice in life. I would rather make safer choice. I won't even jump out of a plane. I don't care how safe skydiving is not happening. So it was then announced early Thursday afternoon that they found the debris from the Titan and that they believe that the five passengers were lost due to an implosion. 
which was due to the pressure under the water. And so the passengers are presumed to have died instantly upon impact. And you can actually see some of the um, Suleiman, 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 Suleiman. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so it's not clear exactly how this happened. There are TikTok videos. Yeah, I'd rather send the camera down there too, Cass. Um, there are videos that like show how quickly the impact would be. So it would be like a very quick sort of boom. Like they wouldn't have felt anything. They wouldn't have known what happened. Um, I don't know if there was any sort of indication that something may have been wrong while they were down there or how quickly it burst while they were down there as well. Again, we know that communication was lost. Stop using big words. I'm not using big words. Um, submersible funny that the submersible is compact, but yet it's a big word, right? Um, that's how, <laughs> that's how short men like to do it. Um, so now you made me lose my train of thought. Um, anyway, it was the, the, the impact, the implosion would have been rather quick. The debris was found closer to the Titanic. So it's unclear how far I mean, I hope they at least made it to see the Titanic. You know what I mean? I hope at least they got to see, even if it was for a few seconds and that's how they got to go out, like, you know, rest in peace. I never, you know, want anybody to, oop, hold on. One moment, please. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Brief tech difficulty. But I mean, I hope they at least got to see the Titanic, right? Because like, if you're going to pay that kind of money, and at least if it was instant, like if I was going to spend money on that, and that seemed like a worthy investment, then I would want to at least be like, wow, son, there's the Titanic. We made it. And then and then take me out, right? Like, don't take me out on the way because like, shit, not only did I waste the money, but then I didn't even get to go out with the experience. I'm sorry if this sounds insensitive, but it's just... I mean, what, how else, like, we have to find a way to process all of this. And it, the whole thing is just wild. Um, it is sad. It is unfortunate. I do, my heart does break for the families as much levity as I'm trying to bring to this live stream or this taping of the podcast. It's mainly so that we're not all just like sitting here sobbing at this. And, you know, we can find uh, healing through humor with tragedy. So please don't think that I'm being insensitive. It is sad. It is unfortunate. My heart does break for these families. But also at the same time, it's like, I couldn't imagine. Like, And I really do hope that if I were to go out, I would at least get to see the Titanic. I would want to see Kate Winslet's boobs again before I got to go out if I had went down like that and I had that kind of money. Otherwise, like refunds. I'm pretty sure the families are now going to sue Ocean Gate which also is a terrible name for a company, but it's unclear how exactly the implosion happened. Reports are saying that there may have been a crack somewhere. It's not entirely clear. I know that like bad weather was a bit of a concern earlier on. Um, it's not a simple case. So nobody really knows what happened because nobody was down there in the middle of the ocean. There wasn't a paparazzi that caught everything and communication was lost because their little Nintendo remote control didn't didn't seem to help very much. But it's also interesting because from what I was seeing, there was like a reporter that that test drove it or like did like a mini excursion, I believe last summer. And he was explaining, you know, it's really interesting, like it's small and, you know, the he had like concerns about the submersible because, you know, it's just, it's something new. It's like going, like, I would never go to the moon for the first time. Like, I wouldn't be with Elon Musk being like, let's go all the way to space and see what happens. I'm okay. Even if I had all the money, I would rather spend it on alcohol or some, or hookers. I don't know, something more experiential that I could, you know, appreciate and hopefully not die from. So yeah, these big expensive excursions, not on my list. I don't even want to go zip lining. And I did that in Mexico and that had to be very forced on me. So yeah, not on my bucket list to go see the Titanic. I saw the movie. I'm good. Um, I mean, I'm curious what you guys think about all this. Uh, they usually say those are the only used for two scientists at a time. Yeah, not five people. Like this was very experimental. And I believe they made them sign like some crazy waivers in order to do this as well. It's like, hey, 
sorry, you might die. So sign this waiver in case you do. Like, yeah, like when you like do excursions, like when you go zip line or something, they're like, yeah, there's may- maybe a chance that something could go really wrong. You never think that something's going to go really wrong because these things have been done forever. However, this is one thing that I feel like we could have put our thinking cap on and been like, yeah, maybe this is not the best idea. These people knew the risks and were willing. Exactly. That's my point. It's like, you know, this was a big risk. The waiver seemed a little intense for them to just be like, yeah, let's just give it a try. I don't know. It's again, my God, but now Cardi B's jumping in on it. Oh, but so the point that I was trying to make earlier is that the the journalist was saying that it was so like small and the trip is so short because they can't stay down there for too long. And even the 96 hour oxygen tank that's not necessarily designed to be used. It's just more of a precaution. But it's so much so that they don't even have a bathroom on the submersible. They don't even have a potty thing. They have like bags and a pee bottle that you can use and a little curtain. And so you go behind the curtain and you do your business and then they blast the music really loud. And then you go and you do your business. Again, not worth $250,000. I can find better use for that. I can bleach more than my hair for that. I can bleach my whole asshole with $250,000. Not going to be worth going down to see the Titanic. Um, But now Cardi B's jumping in on the fight because one of the relatives of one of the deceased passengers, uh, Amish Harding, his stepson Brian, has gotten into some heat after he decided that he was going to go and attend a Blink-182 concert while his stepfather was missing and lost at sea. Probably on his billion dollar stepfather's dime. He's like, I'm going to go VIP tickets to Blink-182. What's my age again? What's my age again? And he said, so this is exactly what he wrote on Facebook. Um, he wrote, it might be distasteful being here, but my family would want me to be at the Blink-182 show as it's my favorite band and music helps me during difficult times. Okay, Brian. Wow. We really, we're we're really not self-aware, are we? Because again, okay, fine. Go, even if you're going to be that tone deaf and that much of a ding dong to go to the Blink-182 concert, you don't need to then post about it on Facebook. Okay. What's my age again? I don't know. What are you, 12? No, he's a grown man. He's making stupid decisions. Posting this shit on Instagram, on Facebook. I, music helped me during my difficult times. Okay, so then go in your bedroom and blast some Blink-182. What's my age again? All the small things? Go for it. I'm not going to judge you. Miss you? The the Jack and Sally song? Yeah. Adam's song? I mean, there are plenty of sad songs from Blink-182 that you can listen to to get your feelings out or, to, or even the happy songs. What's the one? Happy Days by Blink-182. That's a great jam. I don't think that going to a concert while your stepfather is lost at sea is necessarily the best, you know, choice of your time. And again, if you're going to do that, don't post about it on social media. Here's the thing. Nobody knows who the fuck Brian is. So nobody's going to care if Brian's at a Blink-182 concert because nobody's going to recognize him, right? But when you post about it on social media and then you're like, yeah, my stepfather is lost at sea with Ocean Gate. Yeah, then people are going to have some commentary for you, Brian. I saw the video he posted on Twitter and he made absolutely zero sense. Yeah, Jennifer, he made no sense. I miss you. Good song, but too soon. (laughs) Sorry, Jamie. I was just trying to think of Blink-182 songs. I love Blink-182 songs. Um, I was just trying to think of them. I wasn't, you know, too soon. Well, yeah, at that point, it would have been too soon because, you know, it was too soon. Um, But... So after people online called out Brian for being a little tone deaf, he then decided he was going to go to Twitter and Instagram to defend himself, saying that Blink-182 was his way of coping rather than staying home and being sad. He's like, what am I going to do? I'm going to be sad? Yeah, your fucking stepfather's missing. That's something that you're not going to go and celebrate unless you don't like him, which tell me you don't like your stepfather without telling me you don't like your stepfather. So, I mean... I agree with Cardi B because she then calls him out and she's like, yeah, that's a little tone deaf. And she's like, look, this is a perfect example that not all the money in the world is going to buy you love because you can be a billionaire and your family still won't care about you because they're going to use your money to go to a Blink-182 concert. And I'm like, you know what? I get what you're saying. And I agree with you, Cardi B. I agree. That's your family. You should be home sad. Your family member is missing in possible danger. And not like missing is like, Ooh, he went, he got in a fight with my mom and went MIA. No, he's literally lost at sea. He's in a submersible that nobody's ever heard of because nobody knows what a submersible is unless you're a scientist. 
And so you're just, you're going to try to take your mind off things at a Blink-182 concert and take some photos. Like, I'm sorry, Brian, that doesn't sound very empathetic of you. And then you're going to double down about it on social media. Apparently his mother told him to take it down. So he took down the posts. But then once he saw Cardi B jumped in on it, then he called Cardi B a piece of shit trash celebrity. And he says that she was just using him to get clout off of him and his family suffering. I'm sorry. He doesn't look like he's suffering all that much. But listen, grief is unique to everyone. It's not something that, you know, it's unique to everyone, right? Some people grieve very differently. Um, but, you know, he told Cardi B Blink-182 is better than sitting at home and watching the news. And then he finished it by saying that she needs to get some class. I don't think Cardi B has ever claimed to have class. Um, like me, I never, when people are like, you're not classy. I'm like, great. I'm not trying to be. I'm trying to stay on brand. And my brand has never been classy. My brand has always been rambunctious for the most part. But so in addition to fighting with Cardi B, um, in addition to fighting with Cardi B, he then uh, went tweeting about how he wanted this OnlyFans star to sit on him. So there's this woman, Brea. She's an OnlyFans adult performer. She posted like a naughty photo on her Twitter with the caption, can I, oh, can I sit on you? And so Brian then thought that, you know, grieving Brian decided that this would be a great way to take his mind off of his missing stepfather. And so he quote tweeted it and he wrote, yes, please, with uh, a heart face emoji. So, I mean, listen, that's one way to get over the news. Don't watch the that's don't watch the news because then you'll be sad. Instead, watch an OnlyFans performer perform for you. So there you go, guys. If you if you're ever sad, just hit a Brea. She'll take care of you. She'll you know make sure you daydream while you fight with classless Cardi B. So I'm just gonna go out on a whim here and say that maybe Brian doesn't really like his stepfather. Doesn't seem too concerned about his disappearance. Um. I'm sure, you know, an inheritance might ease the grieving, but he's since deleted his social media um, or somebody deleted it for him, maybe his mom. But now he seems to be taking a break since it's all been confirmed that his, step his stepfather sadly is not coming home. So, I mean, maybe now he can play Miss You by Blink-182. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Affluence. She's just trying to make a buck. Listen, I know. Is she, though? Is is she trying to make a buck? Even if this kid doesn't like his stepdad, it's very inconsiderate to his family. That, yeah, if anything, thank you, Mimir, Mimiri. Thank you. That's a better position. Is it's like maybe it's maybe he doesn't like his stepfather. That's fine. How about you be with your mom? Like she lost her husband. I don't know what the situation is, but yeah, that would be a great idea. Go be with your grieving mother. If the news is too hard for you to watch, then maybe you console your mother. Maybe you do a puzzle to get her mind off of things. Like there are plenty of things that we can do to, you know, not be at a Blink-182 concert during a tragedy. I don't know. Get a clue. Shouldn't he have been with his mom? Thank you, Kiki. That, that was the point that I just made. Brian will take his selfie crane at his stepdad's funeral. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I just, I don't. Yeah. Crying. Oh, no. Understand, I didn't like my stepdad either. Come to think of it, I'd go to a Blink-182 concert, too. No, please move on to the Stassi situation. Okay, Jesse with the purple hair says, enough about Brian. She said, screw Brian. He doesn't care about his stepfather. We don't care about him. Um, but love and hopefully some healing to all of the families that lost relatives on the Ocean Gate Titan. Um, you know, as much as we are trying to bring levity to the heaviness to try and take away the pain a little bit, or at least try to, to ease the impact of the reality of the situation, there is a lot of love that we can send to these families. That said, how about a little catch up on Faith? Faith Stowers, Stassi Schroeder, at it again. Stop. He's going to caption his selfie. I miss you. Hashtag Blink-182. Oh, my God. You guys are terrible. Here you make me feel bad. Um, okay. So Faith Stowers has announced that she is now looking 
to earn or to raise $20,000 because she wants your help. This is like a sweet James ad. She wants your help to sue Stassi Schroeder for non-factual claims made about her in her latest book, Off With My Head, since it was published back in August, or sorry, back in April of 2022. So Faith wrote on her crowdfunding site, I think it's GoFundMe is the one that's on. What is going on with this Instagram? Um, so she wrote on her crowdfunding site, Stassi Schroeder has written a New York Times bestseller book recently and has made more terrible non-factual claims about me once again. After all she's done, she continues to stand by her ignorant claims that are very harmful to me and my family. I'm seeking assistance with my legal team to get this book removed and all royalties and funds collected from this book to be given to a charity or assisting a family of choice. Okay. Thank you for your support always. And thank you for standing up against bullies and racial division. She then told Us Weekly exclusively, she said, I believe Stassi hasn't learned from her mistakes and is still alleging in her book that I've committed a felony. This is harmful to my career and to my family. Enough is enough. I found an amazing legal team and we are seeking assistance from supporters that also stand against bullying and racial divide to once and for all end this matter. First of all, she should not be releasing a statement herself. If she has a legal team, they should be issuing the statement on her behalf because that's typically what a legal team does. Also, how is she paying for her legal team currently if she needs $20,000 to sue Stasi Schroeder? And how do we know what that $20,000 actually goes towards? What are they suing for? Are they suing for a settlement? Are they suing for clout? Like, what exactly is the lawsuit for? <clears throat> Um, yeah, people on Twitter and in the live chat are saying that the statute of limitations has passed for a defamation case. It's unclear if she's suing for defamation, though, because she doesn't say I'm suing for defamation. She's very vague about the whole thing. It's unclear exactly what she's suing for or why she's suing. And she says that she wants the book removed, which I'm sorry, we live in the United States of America, and we're not just going to go banning books, unfortunately. That's just not how it works, number one. Number two, so um, Sheena's attorney, the one that helped her fight the restraining order against Raquel, he's come out and he's commented to Us Weekly as well. And so he's saying that he doesn't think the faith has a case against Stassi, at least not with the information that she's uh, shared so far. She, he says because in... The United States, we have a thing called freedom of speech. And so people are allowed to say what it is that they want to say. Now, if it is a defamation case, you have to prove that what was said was false. It was intentionally false and that it was said with the intent to cause harm. So it's really hard to prove a defamation case with someone um, that is considered a public figure. Hold on one second. It's very hard to prove a defamation case with somebody that's considered a public figure with which at this point, Faith has been on multiple reality shows. She has a public Instagram account. She does endorsement deals. So she would be considered a public figure. And it's just it's unclear what it is that she wants. Again, we're not we're not in the business of banning books here. So you can't just take the book down just because somebody wrote something that you didn't like, which we'll get into. I'll read exactly what Stassi wrote in the book. Two, it's unclear what she's suing for. Is she suing for a settlement? And where does that settlement go? Is that just to make her feel better? We're we're doing we're um sorry, I'm trying to fix this Instagram thing. Um is the intention to sue her to get a settlement and then you're going to pocket that money? Because you're saying that you want the royalties from the book to go towards a charity. You don't list what charity it is. Very ambiguous, right? We don't say what charity or what cause or what nonprofit organization. You also say that if it doesn't go to a charity, you're happy with it going to a single family. What family? How did you find another Chewy? Oh, my goodness. Every time I take a, a, a squeaky toy away from him, he finds another one. Um, sorry, guys. Um, but it's just it's so frustrating because it's all so unclear what it is that Faith is actually looking for and why she wants to sue Stassi. And to me, it just seems like a press grab, right? It seems like she wants to gain some notoriety. I think the timing of it's a little questionable with the scandal stuff and with 
the date that she announced it. She announced this on Juneteenth. Um, so I think a lot of it feels a little PR strategy. That's not to say that her experience isn't valid, but also like, what do you expect from Stassi at this point? She's addressed it. She's um, apologized for it. She's taken accountability for it in multiple interviews. She addresses it in the book, which we'll get to in a minute. And I want to know, like, what is it that she claims that is untrue that she feels is harming her and her family? And again, if you're going to make that sort of accusation in a lawsuit, you have to prove damages. What are the damages? Are they monetary damages? Are they punitive damages? Like, what is the actual lawsuit based off of, right? All of it's very unclear. She's like, give me money because I want to sue Stassi because Stassi's a bully. That's basically her argument. And it's like, uh, you can't really sue somebody for being a bully unless there are actual damages, unless there's actual harm. And what is the harm, right? So this is what Stassi wrote in the book. These are direct quotes about how, about what she says about faith in the book. Off with my head. Here's what Stassi wrote. Uh, during the season, Kristen Doty, my fellow cast member, I believe this is right out of this, this quote, because I believe she addresses it twice, but it's right out of the first chapter. Uh, during the season, Kristen Doty, my fellow cast member, started getting texts from people alleging that Faith had stolen from them in the past, saying that Faith was in, sur in a surveillance video showing someone stealing. Then we saw a news article with the video still of the woman who was accused of stealing, so we called the tip line. We stupidly thought it might be Faith, partially because multiple people had been texting Kristen saying that it was her, and also in our very flawed detective work, we thought the description of the woman's tattoos sounded like Faith's. Kristen left a message on the tip line and gave her own contact information and we never heard back. So that was the end of it. To my knowledge, Faith never knew about the call until she heard me talk about it on a podcast about a year later. I believe it was Jackie Schimmel's podcast. Uh, she said, I wasn't hiding it, but I also shouldn't have been talking and joking about it. We also shouldn't have made that phone call, but I didn't understand that at the time. She later continues by saying, I think one of the most profound things I've learned is that just because it wasn't about race for me doesn't mean that it wasn't about race for Faith. Faith brought her experience as a black woman and I brought mine as a white woman, a woman, a white woman who has had who has never had to think twice about the police or what that means for other people, which is basically the pillar of white privilege. So while Kristen and I didn't feel the situation was about race, it was for faith. And because of that, it was about race. Kristen and I messed up because we obviously weren't 100% that the woman in the photo was faith. I know I was in the wrong because I acted on gossip instead of facts. I didn't witness Faith stealing anything, so I have zero right to accuse her. I should never have been discussing this on a podcast or in public, especially in such a braggy and flippant way. I sensationalized it for the sake of a good podcast story, and I regret that immensely. I handled it all incorrectly. I was wrong. I just need people to understand that this wasn't motivated by her race. Was I driven by nefarious motives? Absolutely. I can't deny that. She deeply hurt my friend. I'm assuming she's referencing Brittany and Jax. I, absolutely, I was absolutely motivated by that. And I was motivated by the fact that I thought she was guilty of these crimes. I basically thought I was the karma god just dishing it out exactly where I felt it should be. And then she goes on into talking about how she hired a diverse, diversity coach and how the George Floyd protests were so powerful and it motivated her to want to learn more and be part of the solution and be a better person, especially for her daughter. So what, what is the statute of limitations for Faith to sue Stassi? I, if it's a defamation case, then I believe it is one year. So the statute of limitations would have expired in April of 2023 since the book came out in April of 2022. However, it's unclear what she is suing Stassi for. She doesn't say... I am filing a defamation case against Stassi Schroeder. And again, if that's the case, then in her GoFundMe, she, she should pull exact quotes and say, this is what Stassi said about me. And this was what was incorrect. And I would like to clarify that record. What in that book, or sorry, what in those excerpts would necessarily be considered untrue or non-factual? Stassi is basically just taking account of her own recollection. She uh, apologizes for that. She admits that she was wrong. So 
it's unclear what Faith is looking for. So confused who's even giving Faith money. I, last time I checked, which was, I believe, yesterday or maybe the other day, last time I checked the um, fundraiser, let's see, Faith, Faith Stars go find me. It had like 52 supporters and she had raised $1,000. Wow. She now has received 91 donations. Wow. Somebody just donated $5,000, whoever that was. Wow. Um, because it was at a thousand and now it's at sixty six hundred. So she's close to raising her goal of twenty thousand dollars. I will be very curious to see if she reaches this twenty thousand dollar goal, if she actually does pursue a lawsuit, or if she doesn't because she didn't reach that twenty thousand dollar goal, what happens if she doesn't reach the goal? Does she just keep the sixty six thousand? What does she do with that 66000 Does she donate it to a family of choice? Does she donate it to this ambiguous charity that she's referencing? Should she? I mean, I think if she doesn't raise the money and she can't sue Stassi, again, I don't know what she would sue her for. I don't believe there is a defamation case. Um, yeah, I'm uncertain of what that would even look like at this point but as of right now as of 6 12 p.m pacific time on thursday she's raised sixty six hundred dollars um excuse me sir hey why is it that you're sleeping all day and then the second i have to record you're just causing all sorts of havoc that you normally don't ever cause ever in the entire world <laughs> hi buddy Hi, 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 hi. Um, why just why just drop it? She wants the damn limelight. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be her motivation is it's, you know, press and fame motivated from my perspective because it doesn't really seem like there's much of a reason to sue Stassi at this point. We read what Stassi wrote about in the book. Everything else is not about faith. Everything else is about her being a mom, her being canceled, her coming back. She feels like donating 50 cents. What? I feel like donating 50 cents just for the hell of it. I mean, go for it. You're really just paying for what her lunch. I don't know what you're, what the money is going towards necessarily. Um, that money should be kept. She does, if she doesn't reach her goal. And if she does, then there needs to be evidence to put up that she used the money for the reason. The money, sh oh, the money should not be kept if it's not reached. I agree. If this is about fighting against racial injustice and this is about fighting against bullying, don't use a cause to make yourself money. Don't use it for nefarious, you know, intentions. If he wants your attention. No, he doesn't want my attention. He just wants to play. But we've been on so many long walks today and we've been busy today. And now, now he wants to be, he wants to be <laughs> wild. Um, Yes, thank you, Sandra. Hit the like button, guys. Woo, woo. We have 212 watching live on... Hey, 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 hey. We have 212 watching live on YouTube. Hey, buddy, come on. People get mad at me when I talk to you on the podcast. They're like, I'm tired of your dog. I know, buddy. I know, I know, I know. Show your doggy. That, he's too big for me to carry anymore. He's a big boy now. He's four months old, and he's getting so big. Hi, Connie. So I will not be picking him up to show you because he's too big now but he's so precious and you can see him on my instagram the money should go towards better care of the elderly oh my god i'm dead because if you remember back on vanderpump rules she when she banged jacks accidentally banged jacks and accident rec accidentally recorded it it was while she was taking care of an elderly woman did we forget about that remember she was like the grandma was like asleep in the other room and she was supposed to be taking care of her, but instead she was banging Jax and then filming it and then accidentally leaked it on the show. So, you know, well, if anybody can be fighting the moral cause by starting to GoFundMe, it's Faith Stowers. Diversity coach, they really bit an entire industry of professionals to bully white people. I mean, I don't know if it's intentional to bully white people, but I think if there are white people that have you know, some white guilt and they want to learn more about diversity and they don't have exposure, then they can hire a diversity. Listen, there's 
something for everything and something for everyone. And if you have the money to spend on it and you want to spend it on it, then go for it. The only thing I would advise against spending your money on these days is taking a submersible all the way down to the ocean to go see the Titanic because there's a whole movie about it. So you don't need to see it up close and personal because you can just watch it on a television screen. That elderly woman's family should sue Faith. Well, I think that statute of limitations is way off, Annie. Um, I don't know if they can sue her anymore. Oh, but I mean, that is a case, right? For improper care of the elderly. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's what I have for you guys. We covered the Stasi stuff. We covered the submersible. We covered the Cardi B. We covered the Andy defending Meghan Markle. Anything else you want to discuss before we wrap tonight's live? Hey, bud. Hi, Charmin, baby. Hi, Tones. Your skin looks amazing. Thank you, Connie Clark Harrison. Appreciate you. I love when you tell me I'm pretty. Just tell me that I'm pretty. Actually, Zach, they are banning books just back in Florida and Texas. Obviously, these are different situations, but it's definitely happening. Um, well, my point was it sh we shouldn't be banning books because we live in a free country where we have freedom of the press and freedom of speech, and so books should not be banned. Um, but I don't think it's that books are being banned from access, isn't it? My under Again, I'm very vaguely understanding the book ban thing in Florida. But my very layman's very basic understanding of that is that it's not necessarily that the books are being banned and pulled from shelves. It's that certain books aren't being allowed or they don't want certain books allowed in like certain schools with young children. Um, again, this is my very, very, you know, not deep understanding of what it is. Banned from schools. Okay, so that's what I thought. Banned from schools, which is very different from banning books in general. You know, we're not in a communist country. We don't just take books and ban them and burn the books. Um, but I believe that that argument, not that I agree or disagree, but I, my understanding of it is that the argument is that there are contents in those books that some people feel are inappropriate for young children, and that's why they don't want those books used in schools. Books aren't banned. They don't want sex books in elementary schools. They are porno. Okay, so that that's kind of my understanding of it as well. Um, but again, I haven't, I am very non-researched in that department, just things that I've heard or little rumblings that I've seen on Twitter. Um, did you get a chance to go and listen to Dorinda's radio show today? Russ, I tried to go and listen to Dorinda's radio show today because you told me about it and you said that she popped off on the new Rony cast because the new Rony cast, didn't they like make some like in like dumb remarks about the OG cast about how they all married for money and stuff and Dorinda wasn't happy about it. So she had a martini and she's starting. Um, I wasn't able to listen to it because I don't believe the rebroadcast of her show is available yet. I think it gets uploaded like a little while after. So at the time that I went on Sirius XM, I missed the radio show and the rebroadcast isn't until like 11 PM tonight. And I'm sorry, I'll be in bed, but I believe you Russ. I'm sure it was a good thing. Um, Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, any other closing thoughts, feelings, vibes? Faith just wants fame. She's committing a crime, making a GoFundMe and stealing donations. Okay, that's an accusation, and that's a big accusation. I'm not, I'm not co-signing that accusation. Um, but if she steals the money, then that is a crime. Yes, but I don't know what the regulations are when it comes to like a GoFundMe because anybody can do a GoFundMe. I don't know. Like, I know that there are certain regulations when it comes to, like, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. I don't know how it goes with a GoFundMe and, you know, transparency of that. Because technically, anybody can go on GoFundMe, start an account, do a fundraiser, and then, you know. Uh, Jennifer wants to know, where did the colorful cans on your counter go? Um, I've moved some of them to my bar. So they are on that side of the room, on the bar. Um what do we think of Tamara's return? I love Tamara being back on the show. They can, oh, they can refund a GoFundMe. I, that is true. They can refund a GoFundMe. Didn't they do that with the truckers in Canada? Uh, when they like froze the account and like weren't giving them their money that people were trying to raise for them. So, yeah. All right. Well, I did like Tamara's return. Um, Tamara is very much needed on OC. I do Real Houses of Orange County recaps for The Ringer, so you can listen to The Ringer Reality TV podcast. 
We have a show every Friday called Morally Corrupt. And so I'm on the Kardashians recaps on Thursdays and on the Real Housewives of Orange County recaps on Friday. So you can get my full thoughts on OC over there. Bye, everybody. Sorry, having dinner. I'm about to be hangry. Okay, I wish I were joining you for dinner. I want to go to dinner. Does anybody want to go to dinner with me? I want to go to dinner right now. I don't want to cook dinner. Oh, now he's quiet, right? As we're wrapping up the live. Perfect. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining. I love you. I appreciate you always. Thank you for coming here and supporting me. Okay, I'll listen to that one. The Ringer. Yes. The Ringer Reality TV Podcast on Spotify. I have recaps on Thursdays and Fridays. One of the Kardashians, Fridays of Real Houses of Orange County with Rachel Lindsay. So stay tuned for that. I love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, where can we watch and listen to Morally Corrupt? You can't watch it, but you can listen to it on Spotify. So just look up the reali- the Ringer Reality TV Podcast. The Ringer Reality TV Podcast, and you'll catch Morally Corrupt. New episodes of Morally Corrupt come out on Thursdays and Fridays. I sometimes do Thursdays episodes, um, but usually currently doing the Friday episodes for OC. Um, you can follow me at Just Plain Zach all over the internet. Follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach for all the latest tea and catch new episodes of No Filter with Zach Peter every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on all podcast platforms. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit the like button on your way out. Hit the bell notification button. That way you always get those notifications fresh when the tea is hot. All right, guys, I love you. Get your tickets to my show, July 26th with the Bra Bros at City Winery NYC. Go to nofilterlive.com. That's nofilterlive.com. All right, guys, I love you. I appreciate you, and I will talk to you later. Ciao for now. Bye, 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 bye.